everybody. I'm so excited. Welcome to Plant-Based Chat today at 3 o'clock, the new exciting time, right? Um, we have Tess Chalice with us, who I'm excited about, and I can't wait to introduce you. Oh, wow, a lot of you guys are already hanging out. So make sure you say hello. Tell me where you're from, what the weather's like. It's cloudy here, as you guys can see. I always feel like I have to talk about the weather because you see it behind me. And you may see the bird that's like right around over there. They build a nest and they have big babies now. So they're like flying around feeding them. So don't worry, everything's okay. It's a lovely 63 degrees here for some bizarre reason. It'll probably be 150 tomorrow. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn a little bit about green smoothies, which everybody loves. And that's how I got my wife to start drinking greens and fruit. Like, who doesn't like fruit? My wife, that's who doesn't like fruit. So I, I, we've been making frozen Dole Whip and stuff like that, which works really well. Hey, Apple, it's awesome to see you here as always. And says hello to both of us in Vancouver. It says it's cool and lovely there. And Debbie from London. Oh, I'm gonna get you up there. There we go. It's windy and a little chilly. I like the windy. You know, some people like it really sunny and everything. Tess and I were just talking right before I got on because she lives in, you said, do you live in Phoenix? I know you live in Arizona, but you're in Flagstaff now, right? Yeah, we're so lucky to have a place to get away from the Phoenix heat. So right now I'm in Flagstaff and it's like gorgeous out here oh. right now. It's, it's beautiful. And I lived in Phoenix for like a year and realized I am not much of a desert person. Like, you, it'll, you know how it starts to storm and you'll hear it start to thunder and it's like really building up there in Phoenix and then nothing happens. And then I cry. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I moved there from New Orleans, which is like even more humid than here in North Carolina. So I'm I miss the humidity. Like I'd love to visit and the desert's a beautiful place. So tell us all a little bit about you and what you do. Yeah, so I'm Tess, so happy to be here. I love talking about green smoothies. I'm obsessed with them. Um, and I am, let's see, I've got some cookbooks. I've written actually eight vegan cookbooks um, over the last, 15, not quite 15 years. Um, so I, I love to create, my whole thing is I love to create recipes that um, taste really, really good and really satisfying, but that are also as nourishing and healthy as possible. Um, and let's see what else. I've been vegan since 1991. I have a daughter who's 19 who's been vegan all her life. And so I just really believe in the power of plants. I really believe in, um, to use my friend Colleen's words, joyful vegan. I, I love that she does the joyful vegan thing because I just feel like it is such a joyful, um, it's such a joyful thing. It's great for our bodies. It's great for the planet. It's great for animals. And it's just, it tastes amazing. So uh, that's just a little bit about me. I also am a coach, a, uh, I call it a one degree coach which basically just means that I help people make very small adjustments. And I'm a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in um, doing things in a sustainable, doable, stick, stick withable way. So, so when you say um, coach, are you coaching people on vegan eating? Or are you like a life coach? Like what kind, or do you do all the things? I kind of do all of the things. I started off as like a, a wellness coach. Um, now I do mostly life coaching, some business coaching, and honestly, it like all kind of blends together. Okay. Um, you know, I have one woman that came to me for like sports nutrition, and then we ended up talking about relationships and like how she, why she's has a pattern of unhealthy relationships. So you know, it's 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 kind of any you know any of the there's certain areas that i feel like i have a zone of genius in and certain areas that i'm like not your person for so you know relationships um creating what you want in your life nutrition i mean i was uh, i was a very unhealthy vegan for most of my 20s and so you know i also feel like i've learned a lot about what works nutritionally as well just through my own experience and through working with people so yeah, so it's just a little smidge. And that's why I love the green smoothie thing, because I feel like, and I just have to tell you the story, There's, and I won't tell the place, because I love this health food store immensely. Um, 
but my cousin and good friend Stasia, we were there one time and she got a green smoothie and it was disgusting. And she's like, I cannot drink this. And it's like, it was really like, you know, those like sludgy, really just not a balanced flavor. Just like, you just have to like choke it down. And she went up to the counter and it's like, you know what? I'm so sorry. I can't, I can't drink this. And the guy's like, well, it's a green smoothie. It's not supposed to taste good. And she and I were just like, uh, what the, we're like, no, it, it, a green smoothie should taste good. It should taste good. It can have a ton of greens in it. So I'm excited to just kind of show one of the, you know, some of the things that I've found as to like what what makes a balanced, nutritious, delicious green smoothie. I hear a crying boy. So I'm going to let you chime in. And I'm going to go get a, a crying kitty at the door real quick. Absolutely. I have a kitten. He's new to being outside. You get to see Because we don't want him outside in Phoenix because of the coyotes. So he gets to go outside here. So I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, we'd love to see that. So what I'd love to know from you guys, too, <laughs> and Diane says, sounds like it came from the swamp smoothie. Yeah, I think I have, well, I don't make a lot of those. I have made a couple of those, I think, because when you're like, I'm going to get all this in, or this is the last bunch of kale. <gasps> Look, it's a kitty. Can you come over to this towards your cookbooks? Sweet boy. Towards your cookbooks. Oh, you had him off to What's the that? side. If you, if you oh. are here, I'll put you on full screen now. So that way, wherever you go, you'll, we'll see him. We missed him. And I know everybody wants to see the kitty. Here, listen to his little purr face. Can you hear him purring? He's a little boy. Wait, oh, here we go. Oh, what a cutie pie. Beautiful He's such a little and yeah. okay. Diane was saying it sounds like it came from the swamp smoothie, which is, um, <laughs> and I was saying, I know that I've been overzealous, you know, and you're like, well, there's just that other cup or two of greens. I'm just going to shove those on in there. And then you just went a little bit too far. And that's super not helpful. And Diane says it's an adorable, sweet kitty. Yes, it is. We love the animals. So tell us a little bit about kind of your green smoothie theory. And you're full screen now. I know you can't tell that, but you have have all of it. Have it all. You have it all. The land. All of the land. So um, we could just start making the smoothie because I'm actually really hungry. <laughs> so I normally get up and have a green smoothie and I'm like, I was waiting today. So I'm really hungry. So I'm going to make this green smoothie and we can just talk about everything while we make it. So I'm going to get to the fridge and get some of the things that I put in the green smoothie out. Okay. So green, right? We start with the, we start with the green. This is something that took me a while to figure out, and I'm excited to share it with you guys today. I used to put kale in my green smoothies, and I love kale. To me, it's like there's certain things that I love, but I don't want them everywhere. So like when somebody puts garlic where it doesn't belong, you know, like no offense to anybody that likes the garlic in their, in their, green, in their juices. I don't. I feel like a juice with garlic in it is kind of like, unless it's kind of you're going in that savory area, which that's a, an area that can actually be really great. Um, so, you know, I'd rather just have garlic in a salad dressing or whatever. So, um, what I discovered is that certain greens are extremely overpowering in a green smoothie and kale, although I love it to death, I don't put it in my green smoothies anymore because I feel like too much of it is just really overpowering in flavor. A little bit's okay. And then sometimes, and, and I will say sometimes when I really need a big Im immune boost, I'll just be like, screw it. I don't care what it tastes like. I just want as much nutrition as possible. It can taste like crap. I will throw kale in there. Um, but I have found that um, microgreens, they're so nutritious. And there's a couple of kinds that are very mild in flavor that work really well in a green smoothie. So um, sunflower microgreens and buckwheat microgreens. And when I'm in Phoenix, I get sunflower up here. The sunflower ones didn't look good at the farmer's market, so I got these buckwheat ones. Um, so I'm going to put in, you can put in a lot. So you can put in a lot of buckwheat greens. That's not even that much. I'm going to put in a whole other bag. 
is the reason you can put so much more is because they're microgreens, they're babies, they don't really have that bitter flavor that sometimes bigger greens get. It, would you say that? That's a good question. And I, I think it's more, it's not so much that. So for example, basil, to me, a basil microgreen tastes just as basil as basil. It's really just the variety of microgreens. It's just the fact that it's buckwheat or it's sunflower because they are such a mild flavor. So I've put in, and excuse how, Sorry, my um, my Vitamix looks. We, the, our Vitamixes get so much use that they just get cloudy and residuey, and they don't look great. But um, I, I, that's the not. that's a badge of honor right there. I've got it too. Thank you. Be proud. <laughs> I've used the crap out of this like six hundred dollar blender, or depending on when I you know. bought it. Like I love how things go down as yeah. things go longer. And actually, I was at Costco the other day, you guys, if anybody's been trying to decide if they're going to take a Vitamix or Blendtec plunge, they had a really nice Vitamix with the attachments that have the cups, and it was $2.99. It was $100 off wow. there. It was, yeah. If you're on the fence about getting a Vitamix, I mean, I am in no way affiliated with Vitamix. I get nothing from them. They don't know if I, they don't care that I'm alive, but I can tell you that it's like, I mean, it's just an investment in your health. I'm a big believer that if something is an investment in your health, you should just do it. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of, in my in my well-used, over, you know, over-loved Vitamix, there's a lot of, there's a lot of buckwheat microgreens. The other green is just spinach, baby spinach. This is also farmer's market spinach. Um, and so I'm gonna just put in, you know, I'm putting in a crap ton of greens, you guys. I mean, I mean, you practice. I mean, you can put in so many greens if it's the right kind of green. You can get so many greens in your body by using the right kind of greens and balancing out your smoothie. So I'm pushing this down. Let's see how how many cups is this? I'm thinking this like three, is, three to four. Looks like four packed cups of greens okay. in here. That's a lot of greens. That's awesome. So you know, you can eat a lot of greens. The other Thing that I have discovered just this last year that I'm really loving is the sweet tart element of a green smoothie. And by that I mean I love having some tart elements in there and then some sweet elements and it just makes it really like refreshing. It's like a, you know how like lemonade, you've got the sweet and the tart, it's just refreshing and yummy. That is what I like to do with a green smoothie. So you've got your greens as your base, right? Then I'm gonna put in my tart element. For tart, I'm using some of this um, yogurt, it's an unsweetened, it's an unsweetened vegan yogurt. Um, I also use, I think it's, what is the coconut, unsweetened coconut yogurt. It also comes in the big containers. Um, any unsweetened, you know, yogurt, vegan yogurt is fine. Um, so I'm gonna put some of that in there. And I'm just gonna spoon a little bit of that in there. Um, let's see, this down a little bit. Well, I'll just show you what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna pour in just maybe, you know. You measure I like know. I do. Thereabouts, because like one of the things I always try to tell people, and it's very obvious, I think, you don't have to have four packed cups of greens. If you had three and a half or four and a half, that is also fine. Yeah. And enough yogurt, because like, I love Nancy's oat milk yogurt. We can't get it here very often. It's I make my find. own oat milk yogurt, Ooh, but- um, That's even better depending on which vegan yogurt you get some are tangier than others and so you'll end yes. up naturally adjusting for that so i love that thank totally. you yeah oh good yeah i mean and yeah it's i'm you know whatever kind of yogurt you use you know any kind of vegan um any kind of vegan unsweetened plain yogurt works well in this um okay the other thing i was going to say as far as vegetables go you can also throw in a carrot you can chunk up a carrot. That's another great thing about having something like a Vitamix is that, um, is that you know, it'll blend it up really smooth. If you have a regular blender, you can't really throw a carrot in there. Um, so I love having, you know, I love having a Vitamix. I sound like I'm doing an ad for them, but I mean, it's just the truth. I just, I love it. I used to travel with it all the time. Um, depending, I still do. Um, but it's just, such, it's so great because you can just throw a carrot. Um, if you're going in a different flavor direction, you could throw some beet in there. You can throw really like hardcore stuff in there and it blends it up really well. Okay, so the other thing for the tart element, and this is like the magical thing, which some of you may not be able to find, and I'm sorry if that's the case, because 
you know, where I used to live before I moved to Arizona, I would not have been able to find this, but I'm gonna grab something out of my freezer real quick and show you what it is. Okay. Uh -oh. I like I to think of our freezers as like an extension of our pantries. Oh yeah, for sure. So, okay. So this is, and I, my favorite fruit in the world is passion fruit. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. It's so, it's like divine elixir from like the heavens. I love it. So I recently discovered that you can get this. I got this at Sprouts. I've also seen it at Whole Foods. Um, I've seen it at Sprouts as well. And you know what? I just, I'm doing a deck so garden and I've just bought some passion fruit plants, which actually, uh, there's two kinds mm -hmm. and one is native to North Carolina, which seems oh, bizarre, wow. but it is. And it just, oh my gosh. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. Oh, it's like heavenly. It's like smelling Hawaii. Okay. And then I'm just going to throw in like, I don't know, like half the bag, just like bloop, pretty good amount. So that's like six ounces. You know, when I when I create, you know, for cookbooks, I when I create a cookbook recipe, I'm very precise about it. So if you get my cookbooks, the recipes are very precise. Um, but you know, for the green smoothies, I just kind of eyeball it usually for myself. Okay, so now we've got the tart. You can also throw in some cranberries. I've been finding occasionally they're kind of hard to find, but you can also find frozen cranberries at the health food store. And so sometimes I'll throw those in um, when it's like. Thanksgiving season, I will sometimes I'll just buy up a bunch of the because I can it's like the only time I can find organic cranberries and they're fresh and they look good. So sometimes I'll buy a ton of those and just freeze them. Um, so cranberries are great, obviously, for women's health and all of those things, too. Um, so that's another. So you've got your tart in there, right? You don't want to go too crazy. But like, you know, depending on depending on it, I usually put like some yogurt and like a tart fruit in there. So that's our that's our smoothie mm -hmm. so far. And we've this got a cool. lot of different people who are saying some good things too. Apple uses pink grapefruit for tartness. Oh, um, nice. And I love was, grapefruit. was saying yeah. for Canadians, um, there's a Riviera oat-based vegan delight, which is a yogurt that's plain. And also that she puts ginger in everything. <laughs> I love ginger. I love ginger. I personally wouldn't put it in this because it would overpower the passion fruit flavor to me. But I love, I'm with you on like, I love ginger. I'm like obsessed with it. We, I could go, I could do a whole show on just how much I love ginger and what I do with it. Um, okay. So you've got your, you got your green smoothie. Now we need the sweet element. Um, for sweet, there's a couple different things that I use. And of course you can kind of do different things than I do, but I do pineapple. So I've just got some, you know, organic frozen pineapple I'm going to throw in here. Um, so I'm throwing in some pineapple. There's not, there's not that much pineapple. I don't, I'm a little low on pineapple. It's on the shopping list. And I don't have, this isn't a, as, as stocked of a kitchen as our flags, as our Phoenix place. Um, Cause we just started, we just started coming up here for like the summer, like this month. Um, so I thought I had dates and I don't, but a nice pitted date or two in here, you know, throw that in here, sweetens it up beautifully. Um, I don't have anything against added sweeteners, but you just don't need them in this. You can just throw, it can just be sweetened just through fruit. Another thing. And again, I, I'm not affiliated with any companies, but, um, Protein powders, I've had a really hard time finding good protein powders. This one's pretty good. Um, it's um, Longevity Warehouse Protein Powder. I'm obsessed with their, like, soda and tinctures. They're, like, superfood soda tinctures. I kind of wish I was affiliated with them because I tell everybody about them. And Do you want to? Okay, I'll, I'll show those to you after this because they okay. are, like, amazing. I want to see for I'm sure. Like, what's that? I want to see that for sure. I am upset. And that's how I discovered this protein powder because I was trying to make a minimum so I could get free shipping on my um, soda elixirs. And then I um, and then I was like, I'll try their protein. And it's pretty good. It's hard to find a protein powder that's not disgusting, in my opinion. I was using one and I loved the ingredients. And it was just I, I was like, I, I've hit a wall with the flavor on this thing. I cannot I cannot handle the flavor of this anymore. It's so gross. But this one's pretty good. And this is also kind of sweet. Um, there's an Orgain one. That's like a pure, I can show it to you. It's like a, uh, And Ashley's saying too, she loves frozen banana for sweetness. If you don't mind the taste of banana. I know a lot of people oh, are cool. real anti. 
I'm pro banana. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but you know, yeah, I like the banana. Um, so yeah, I would say that a banana would work really well, especially if you freeze them when they're, you know, relatively ripe, which I do because I want them to be sweeter. I've got, you know, I've got a big, I've got a big old bag of frozen bananas in the freezer. Yeah. So, you know, be sure to peel them before you freeze them, please. You only do that once. <laughs> What's that? You only do that once, not peeling it and then freezing it. <laughs> or, or you're a stubborn man that I used to date and who would insist that that was the right way to do it. And I'm like, dude, we're going to break up over this. That is just not okay. Like, no. But he just insisted that that was the correct way to do it. I'm like, oh no God, mansplaining no. my fruit. Thank you. No, my husband now, he knows that I am the queen of the kitchen and he just <laughs> is my sous chef. He knows his place. That is what I require. <laughs> oh, I own the kitchen. So I, I agree yeah. with you. Your wife, so your wife gets it too? Yeah, she she doesn't cook that much, but um, but yeah, no, I've never She's seen anyone happen. take so long to heat up lunch. Like if I'm in the kitchen trying to do stuff, I'm just like, how does it take 20 minutes to do what you just did? <laughs> and so sometimes I'm, you know, I, I am not yeah. always, every, the sweet, nice, lovable person that you see is not a 24 seven sort of thing. I try, <laughs> but then we remember try, it's pandemic, it's okay. we've all been living together for three years too with no, yeah. <laughs> no outside. <laughs> Nobody has to be perfect. And these, you know, are your wife and my husband, they probably know, I mean, I know my husband does and hopefully your wife, they know they're lucky to live with us because we cook them great food. So they, they don't get to really complain anyway. They get, Absolutely. They get and Kara life. was just <laughs> saying too, fruit has a lot of protein, so she doesn't use any of the processed protein powders. And I think it's fine if you use it or you don't use it. That's all, yeah. like all the things here yeah. are is so awesome because they're choices, right? So if I hate yeah. buckwheat or I hate spinach, I can still make this green smoothie and just make it my way. Absolutely. Which is Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I didn't used to like protein powder. I have found for myself, it keeps me full longer. So if I want something like right now, I'm not going to put protein powder in it because I'm like, I want lunch. Like I want to have something a little bit lighter and then I want to eat my, I want to eat my lunch because I already know what I'm having. So I'm like not going to do the protein powder, but there's a lot of days where I need it to be really sort of sustaining. And then I'll put in like a scoop or two of protein powder. So it's can be you know, it can be you just don't like it or you like it all the time or you're like me and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The other thing, if you want it to be sustaining, is like you could put in some chia seeds, uh, which blend up beautifully in, you know, a high powered and, you know, blend tech works well, too. I prefer a Vitamix, but any high powered blender, you can throw some chia seeds in. Um, they probably work in a regular blender too. They just wouldn't blend up completely. You'd have some of the seeds still visible. And my daughter, when she, or when I make her um, a smoothie and I want it to really be filling, I throw some like raw cashews in there and that really bulks it up too. So if you want it to be more filling and sustaining, those are some things you can do. Um, you can put, you can even put some sea moss gel in there if you want to like increase those nutrients. Um, and most sea mosses are very um, neutral in flavor. Um, I am going to, and I, and I love, and I'm not affiliated with anybody, but I love plugging great businesses. So I'm going to plug this guy real quick. Um, I, I don't know how I've got a targeted ad for this stuff. And I just saw him on Shark Tank and I love, I love to support a black owned business. That's, you know, I love to support LGBTQ businesses. I just love this. I love to, you know, that's something I enjoy. And this guy just seemed like such a sweetheart and his, he was, and he's vegan. And so, um, and I love this. So this, I, um, CMOS oh, gel. Strawberry. Trans Transformation factory. I tried some of the other flavors that I didn't love. I will say I didn't love the goji flavor. Um, and the elderberry was like, okay, but the strawberry is actually really yummy. Like it's actually kind of like, feels like a treat. So Transformation Factory supported. I mean, just what I, the vibe I got, I was just, this guy's a sweetheart. So oh, anyway, nice. you could throw some of that in there too, well, or you I could just eat it like that. with a spoon. And don't forget too, like, like what you were saying, you can put chia seeds in, you can put flax seeds in, you could put some ground up lentils in if you wanted, you know, instead of getting 
like um, pea oh, protein isolate, right? So there's mm -hmm. so many different ways you can do stuff. That looks so yummy. It's actually really good. I wish you guys could taste it. I'm just, Me too. I kept, this morning I kept thinking like, oh, I want to have sea moss today. And now I'm reminded. So I'm just doing it. Since you said it's casual, I'm like taking your word for that. And oh. I'm like, yes, casual. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the lentils, Kathy, because, um, and I actually have a recipe in one of my cookbooks. I think it's a Mediterranean one. Um, where I put chickpeas in a smoothie, which sounds like gross. Mm. And I would totally judge that. But I, if it's balanced right and you've got enough fruit in there and it's not too thick, it can actually be a great little, again, something sustaining to keep you going if you just need more in your smoothie and you need it to be more like a mini meal or a functioning meal of some kind. I'm going to go back to where it's both of us for a minute because, well, I wrote the Great Vegan Bean Book. So, like, I did, I've done beans in everything. So, and, and beans are amazing. My only caution is. If you have a lot of beans in something, don't put a lot of flaxseed in it or don't eat a whole bunch of them for a whole weekend. Like I nearly killed my wife. Like she was in the bathroom constantly. She's going to kill me for saying that. But it was my fault because I like I made waffles and we had, you know, muffins and all these things. And then basically we yeah. fibered too. It's impossible you to fiber, fiber too much until you do yeah. it. Right. But I'm familiar. Yeah. You, yeah. you can over fiber. <laughs> I know this well. <laughs> well yeah. When you're doing it's, a cookbook, it's really yeah, when you're doing a cookbook, it's a whole different thing because usually you're not making all the baked goods in three days, right? Like normal, normal people would just have a waffle and then just go on with their right. merry way. And so, but I always said too, so like I did a lot of beans as the base of waffles, pancakes, cookies, and desserts. And I'm like, First thing you do is you blend it with some other stuff. I'm like, don't taste it before you put the sweetener in because it's going to taste nasty. I love that you put that in your cookbook. I, I've done that in my cookbooks too. It's like you're like holding their hand and like, no, it's okay, honey. Just, but don't do this. Don't taste it. Like I, I literally put that in one of my cookbooks too. I'm like, don't try it. You're going to think it's gross. Just keep going. I Trust me on this. It, exactly. <laughs> and you just got to get past that. that. It's just like chocolate hummus yeah. now is a thing, but like, the Great Vegan Bean Book, I think I wrote like 10 years ago, and people weren't yeah. doing sweets and things like that. Um, oh, and, well, here's something funny. Lydia says, and this is what people always say. Now, don't, remember this, whenever you're having relationship things, and they always say, believe what they're telling you. Because I always go, I'm not nice all the time. I'm not sweet all the time. And people go, oh, no, it must be so wonderful living with you. And I'm like, no. No, it's not. You know why? Because it's not. But I told you, and, and Cheryl's always like, I can't believe this. And I'm like, you know, it's the way it is. And um, Mary was, Cooper was saying, you could also use sprouts. And microgreens are kind of like teenage sprouts is the way I think yeah. about them. They're in the same kind of like genre there. Sprouts, yeah. And again, I would, I would choose sprouts. Um, you know, alfalfa might not be bad. Um, I was trying to go back to my sprouted. I used to do sprouts all the time and uh, they were getting kind of buggy. So I, I haven't done it, but I'd like to get back to it because they are very easy to do and they're so nutritious. Um, as long as, you know, as long as you're not too overpowering in flavor, um, it'll still taste really good. So don't um, do radish yeah. sprouts. <laughs> I think that would be, yeah, don't, don't do radish sprouts or like mustard no. green sp sprouts. <laughs> right. Right. And actually I could taste, uh, I think some mustard did get mixed in uh, with these buckwheat. We, I think the grower of these mixed them a little bit because I was like, um, this may not taste amazing because I, I think that they actually mixed them a little bit, which I didn't expect or really like. So, uh, but I've never had that happen before. I think they maybe did a little fluke thing in one of their bags. So crossing my fingers, this one is, because I put a lot of microgreens in this. I'm crossing my fingers, this is good. So I'm gonna, so that's, you know, this is pretty much it, you guys. I've got, I've got my greens, I've got my tart elements, my yogurt and my passion fruit. And then I've got my sweet um, pineapple in here. I feel like this isn't gonna be sweet enough because I don't have enough pineapple and I don't have dates. And I would like to put those in here, but I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna drink it anyway. Um, and the passion fruit still does have some sweetness to it. So anyway, I'm gonna pour in, I'm Cass actually just gonna pour in some water. Oh, you're putting water in there, okay. Cause I was gonna ask if like, maybe you would put in vanilla 
plant-based milk or would you ever put a splash of maple syrup? But I'm wondering if there was a lot of mustard greens and you don't have a date, what, how would you solve some of that? How would you solve what? If, if it does have a mustardy taste, you don't have dates, what would be kind of your go-to? I think you don't solve it, you choke it down. I don't think there's a way, there's certain things that are just so off that you cannot, you can, there's no going back. I don't think a mustard, cause then it's like, cause a mustard to me is like such a savory, um, spicy direction that it's like that point, it's like just, just choke it down and drink it. And like, I mean, I don't know if any, I think vanilla would almost make it, to me, I feel like vanilla would make it worse. And I love vanilla in like a, like a strawberry smoothie or like a, you know, like a cashew milkshake or something like mm -hmm. that. But I would want vanilla in this. I just don't know what you could do to bring back the mustard other than like putting way more stuff in there to dilute it down. Yeah. But mint then you're just mint more sometimes is something that helps me. I use mint a lot instead of any sweetener. Um, to kind of use what? Mint, fresh mint. Oh, that would be yummy. Yeah, a big yeah. handful. Plus, it's, I'm sure it's got to have good stuff in there. I've never looked up the nutritional value of mint. Oh, that's wonderful. But I figure yeah. a handful of anything green counts. Anything green is great, and herbs especially are so high in antioxidants, and mint is great for digestion. It's great for gas. It's great for, like, all those, you know, that I, yeah. I, sometimes I have to remember that. I'm like, oh, I should try some mint. <laughs> Let's see if that helps this over bean situation here. Um, so I'm going to blend this up right now and, um, we'll see how, we'll see how it is. We'll see what happens with this mute little you while it's blending. When it, whenever okay, you're, thank you. Yeah. And then I'll unmute you. Okay, I promise. Great. Ready? Okay. Muting. Yep. So, and, and that's always very interesting. Like when you get something in your greens, you weren't quite expecting, um, so it is a good idea to maybe taste things. I know I've done some recipes for things and people used mustard greens for them and then was like, this is gross. And I'm like, well, you know, mustard is a special kind of green. Diane is saying peppermint, spearmint is delicious in smoothies and fruit salads. Absolutely it is. And um, Everyday Dish, which is my friend, <laughs> Julie Hassan that we're going to be doing something I think it's next week we're going to be doing something with the ninja creamy together so you guys have to be super excited um, and then Mary Cooper says oh hi Mary I haven't seen you in a while I have power protein sprouts that have red lentil green lentil garbanzo and peas and that could replace protein powder that's really awesome and you you're off mute now Hello. So let's pour this. Let's see. It's very green. It's beautiful. I like to use a, my, my go-to is a small mouth mason jar, which there's still, this is a big green smoothie. So sometimes I'll drink some of it and then I'll keep some of it for later. It does need a little more sweet as I suspected. I didn't put enough, you know, pineapple in there, um, but it's good. It's definitely, I cannot, I cannot taste the greens at all. I can't taste the greens. With a little more sweet in this, it would be like chef's kiss. It'd be so yummy. But oh, that sounds awesome. I wish I could hand you a handful of mint because I bet that would fix it all. <laughs> yeah, mint is so good. But yes, I wish I could give you some of this smoothie with just a little more pineapple in it or like a couple of days. I'd put probably like one date or like another little handful of pineapple and it'd be like the perfect amount of sweetness. I'm obsessed with pineapple right now, like obsessed. Me too. And Me I too. I'm putting it stir fries. Oh, yep. Yep. It's good in that. What have I've you been, been doing with it? Um, well, I've been using this thing called a Ninja Creamy, which I had mentioned that um, Julie and I were going to do. And we're up and we're both up now again. You can't, it's weird because you guys who are watching see it, but the people who I'm talking to never know. I could do anything. <laughs> No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but it's basically like a Paco Jet if you've done anything. In so like you freeze something for 24 hours and then it basically scrapes it down. So like even nice cream, I've been just mushing bananas with a little bit of vanilla and some um, non-dairy milk. And it's way creamier than like um, a Yo Nana. And it doesn't like wow. since you're freezing it first, then when you're ready to eat it, 
you put it in and it spins it, it's always soft and creamy instead of like me making um, an oil-free low sugar ice cream and like one that, you know, like either with or without a compressor, the Cuisinarts, and then you put it in something. And then you mm -hmm. have to take it out and let it thaw for a half an hour so you can make a scoop. Because that irritates me. Can you me tell? Me too. It irritates totally. me a lot. <laughs> and so That's this why way, I use my, I have a Yonana machine here. I don't use it because I'm like, I don't want to have to let something sit out for half an hour. Like, no. Right. Well, I'd love to both share this like irritation with something so si simple that most people wouldn't care about. And we're like, no, we don't want to do this. It's not okay. And Julie's saying that, you know, Julie Hassan, she was saying, Tess, you would love a Ninja Creamy. Um, and it's... Julie's here? Yeah, that's every everyday dish. Yeah, that, Julie and I are going to be doing oh. something with the Creamy next week because we're oh. starting to do Wait. a show, a different show together. Wait, so Julie's here live right now? Um, she's in the comments. Yeah, she's watching. Oh. Hey, Julie? No, I know Julie. We're friends. Yeah, I love Julie. Yeah, me too. Um, and we were, we were, ag awesome. were actually starting a different show and we were trying to think up names for it. And we were on like speakerphone in the car and Cheryl's like, you call that a meeting? Cause we were like hilariously laughing for like 45 of the hour we were on the phone. But like, and Lydia loves the Ninja Creamy too. And I'm actually working on some date sweetened oat ice creams, but I make Ooh, a killer yep, Dole Whip. So it's just like canned pineapple and juice or fresh pineapple with some juice a little bit of non-dairy milk and there you go so like yeah. also you can eat a pint every night because it's like fruit why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just eat that all the time i need to try this thing i i need to when we're done i want you to message me that because i'm not writing it down right now and i may forget it but like i totally want to get this sounds amazing and i didn't want to forget to show you the the elixir drinks either and julie says i am hi tess hi julie and lydia <laughs> says she's looking forward to our new show julie it's probably going to be uh, me and julie laughing a lot like we keep coming up with these great ideas we're going to use our grill because i have a grill that i've never used and in fact we opened it up to see if everything was okay and something had built a nest so we've got oh. to clean out the nest so that I can oh, use God. it. <laughs> but um, we, we both oh, like God. cocktails and mocktails. In fact, I've decided it was a hard day. I'm having a mocktail. I'm having a nice elderflower tonic water with, um, I've been drinking a lot of these zero alcohol things. This is a ritual gin. So, and it's like zero calories. <laughs> But it's, it's I hot. think those are really good. I need to try those. I love, yeah, I don't, I personally don't drink, so I love fun, non alcoholic drinks. I'm totally obsessed oh, with them. Oh my god, I gotta show you this then. Let me come over here. See, I told you it was gonna turn into something different and show and tell. I'm waiting for some more of these. These are from um, Australia, though. There's it's liars, and so this hmm. one is an aperitif rosa and this one's like okay. a, a sweet vermouth okay and so i'm actually going to be doing some different recipes with them there's another if you i love gin and i do drink some but i'm kind of going for no drinking over the summer but i have to have a special drink and also for this i made a lavender orange syrup simple syrup Ooh. that i just use nice. like maybe two teaspoons in here. I mean, so it's like this, you would pay $16 to get this cocktail out at a cocktail place. Mm -hmm. And I can have it yeah, in the middle of the day sure. and still Sounds continue amazing. my life instead of taking a nap as if it had real gin. But Gin-ish is another brand and that gin was fabulous. So you did you bring the other, oh, and Mary, okay, yeah. here we go. Sorry, I was, I got excited. I do that. That's why things have to be casual on my show. Diane <laughs> says, oh wow, I've been using Vitamix to make nice cream. I've heard about the Ninja Creamy. Thanks for the cool hot weather ideas. And Mary Cooper saying, what's a Ninja Creamy used for? It really is used, and I'll show it real quick because it's right here. Can you tell I'm five foot one and a half now as I'm reaching across my cabinet? I really. <laughs> 
What was it? Somebody told me the other day to say I'm fun sized. Oh, so, I love that. If I'm if I'm right about it, I think Julie's uh, in our club too. I think Julie and I have <laughs> conversations about how we're short. Everybody seems taller than me. So like there's these little buttons in this. And so what's below that? Because I just don't have, uh, you've, there's little pints you freeze and they have little feet that fit in here. And so you put the pint in and then you close this up. And see there's a hole and there's actually a little thing through there and there's the blade. And it pushes it through and the blade goes all the way through. And yeah. if it's particularly frozen, or particularly no oil, no fat, or sorbet sometimes, you might have to re-spin it. It's called spinning, because the blade spins. Mm -hmm. So if, it, if you do it once and it looks like dipping Dots or a powder, mm -hmm. you just need to do it again. How long does it spin? Two to three minutes. Okay. Uh, Paco Jet, I think, spins for like five to six minutes. So this, these are like around $1.99, and it includes a couple of the pints. And I'm getting a whole bunch because I'm, I'm working on an ebook for it. Um, but like a Paco Jet, which is the only other thing like it for restaurants, the like toned down version is $5,000. The wow. other one is $10,000. Your so, dog's like, I can't handle that. So this may Your seem like a lot. Barking. Right, yeah, no, even I won't do that. And I have the Breville Air. You know, there's a few yeah. things I go a little far on. But like, so for $200, like I have an ice cream maker with a compressor, but it doesn't freeze it enough. Same thing as the one that goes in the fridge, or freezer, to just eat it. You have to freeze it a little bit more in the freezer, I've always found after that yeah so some people complain but like i can make 10 of these pints put them in the freezer then when we're ready i pull one out and if your oh, freezer is particularly cool you might pull it out five to ten minutes ahead of time but oh, i'm okay. totally gonna i'm gonna totally check that out i'm so excited because cool. i've been thinking about it because we have the yonana up here at flagstaff and i just don't use it for like you know, because I don't like to let the stuff sit out and I'm just like not that excited about it. I'd rather just blend something up in my Vitamix. But then, you you know, this sounds better than that. Well, and it's, um, it scoops and it's like, it's beautiful. But go ahead. I want to see oh your other God. stuff too. I'm so excited. So I pulled out, this is a soda stream, which I <sighs> love. I love, you know, I'll put you on full again. And I'm going to put me on mute because someone's trying to deliver something. Um, and I got the extra bottles for it. I feel like it's, you know, really helpful to have the extra. So I have like three of these bottles in the fridge with um, carbonated water, right? So they have, so you've got your carbonated water. And so these are the, um, these are the superfood drinks that I'm like completely obsessed with. Um, and again, not affiliated with them at all. I wish I was, cause I tell everybody about them. Um, but I, I first discovered them in, um, there's a restaurant in Phoenix called Giving Tree, and it's just like a vegan, high vibe, organic, you know, great, real healthy stuff, superfood stuff. And they had, you know, root beer, they had um, like a lemon lime soda, they had a cherry cola, they had all those things on their menu. And so I started trying them and I was like, oh my God, these are so good. Like, they're so good. And the ingredients are like amazing. Um, so then they sold me. He was, he's such a sweetheart. He's like, oh, I'll, see, I'll give you a cost. I'll give you like a thing of it. And so then I was hooked in and then I just started going to their website and getting all the flavors. Um, but the ingredients are amazing and they have like adaptogens, um, reishi mushrooms in some, um, like this cherry cola has um, reishi mushroom in it. Um, the vanilla has, what does the vanilla one have? Um, uh, ashwanga or I can't even, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But they are just, they're superfoods. This is the root beer one is really good. Is, is the brand Jing soda? Is what? that what I'm saying? I'm a little, I'm a little confused because like, you know, it says, this one says longevity, oh, longe longevity. So just go to like longevity warehouse. They're not cheap, but they're worth it. Um, I used to like the super, ver the super berry. I don't really like that flavor anymore. My husband does not like it. But um, I think that's the only one that I don't like. I, I love the orange soda one. It's like a turmeric orange. Um, I love that one. 
and you just put a little bit, you know, I just put like a teaspoon, um, I put a teaspoon in a, you know, big glass like this, and then I fill the rest up with the sparkling water, and then that's my like fun drink that's like, and it's like, what other soda, the more you drink of it, the healthier it is. Like, I'm just, I should be a spokesperson for them, I swear. But, and I love the cherry cola. Oh, I don't love the regular cola. Um, but I love the cherry. So I don't know that I'd recommend the regular cola or the super berry. Um, the lemon lime, I had to grow on me, but I feel like the root beer is fantastic. Um, the vanilla soda, if you like a vanilla soda, their vanilla soda is really good. Ooh. And the orange soda is really good. So those are the ones I would probably start with and the cherry cola. I'll have to try that. Diane was saying, would I put a link to these items that Tess mentioned? Yes, I will. I'll, I'll put them on YouTube. So if you're not watching on YouTube, and I always forget yeah. what I call my YouTube channel, but if you look up Kathy Hester, you will get there. And just, yeah, it's Longevity Warehouse. Um, what else? I love, they, they have the, the protein powder that I really like. Um, and they're just really great. They're just really good ingredients. Everything on their site is so nutritious. Not, no, I will back up. I don't think everything on their site is nutritious. <laughs> I don't think it's an all vegan site, but the stuff I get, I think is amazing. And then they have this um, Living Intentions cheesy popcorn on there, which I will often Ooh. add if I'm just under free shipping, I throw down that it's so good. It's like living, anything Living Intentions is also, it's another brand that's like amazing. And I think they are an all vegan brand. Um, so those are my little, some of my little favorite things. I, you know, foodies, we get it. We just get so like excited about food and it's like, ah, to tell well, everybody. Right. And why not be excited? And you guys, I'm, we're back on the two. And so notice it says testchalice.com. So you can go and find all of her goodness and find the books. Make sure you sign up for her website so you can get all the information and follow her on social. Um, does anybody have any questions? I'll just kind of throw that out. I know it'll take a minute. Apple says that she puts flavored vinegar with sparkling water, and it's called a shrub. Yes, it is called a shrub. Um, oh, that sounds great. And in fact, yeah. I ha it, it does have sugar. You could do a different kind. There's a recipe. It's my friend Nancy McDermott's strawberry shrub. is on healthyslowcooking.com, and it is so good. Another that thing great. Yeah. I do, and you could do this with the sparkling water too, is I had a pint of strawberries, so of course I ate all the strawberries, but I cut off the tops, put them in a, a, a glass pitcher with a handful of mint, and I think I got three different flavored pitchers out of it. Oh, yeah. And you just reminded me, this is actually, this is a uh, recipe on my website too, but it's, this is my most recent, my most recent cookbook of the eight that I've written. Um, but there's a drink in here I'm going to show you guys that just reminded me of it. It's um, it's just watermelon and strawberries. Um, where is it? And uh, watermelon, oh, and lime. Watermelon oh. lime cooler. It's so it's like now that we're getting into summer, um, you, can, you can go to my website and find the recipe. You don't have to have the book. Uh, my daughter throws a little mint in it too, which I'm sure you would like, Kathy. Um, <laughs> But if you have this book, it's in there, but it's also just on my website. You can just search, just search watermelon. Uh, but it is so, it is so refreshing. And it's just like, you're just eating whole foods. You're basically just blending up whole fruit and drinking it. So it's like, it's just so nutritious. You've got all the fiber in there still. And see, that's awesome. And so like that drink, you could put in a creamy pint, freeze it and make it frozen. Also, you can do smoothies and it's smoothie possible. bowls. So I did a smoothie, a green smoothie bowl for this too, because then you could prep all your smoothie bowls for the week and be done with it. It's just very interesting the way everything overlaps. And I like to cut up a watermelon and freeze the watermelon part and then use that in smoothies. It's really good, really similar to what you're doing with lime and maybe yes. whatever you want to put in there, water, milk, whatever, obviously non-dairy milk, but. Right. Another little tip I will say, just on the on the vein of watermelon, um, life changing. You're welcome. Um, don't I don't want to sound bossy, but like don't eat watermelon unless you put a little lime on it. It is like game changing. Fresh watermelon with a squeeze of like, well, watermelon with a squeeze of fresh lime on top is like it's so good. Someone introduced this to me a few years ago, and I'm like, I can't even eat, I can't eat watermelon if I don't have lime on it now. It's like it's so good. Well, in the south, you know, we put a little bit of salt. 
and that's the way I grew up oh, on it. So, so and it's I didn't um, know that. And so I one thing that. I like now is that you know they have that um, powder, and actually um, Rancho Gordo has one too that's like chili lime powder and a little bit of salt. That's killer. It's killer on mango yeah. and papaya, yeah. but it's good on watermelon too, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Well, nice. thank you so much for joining us and sharing all this great information with us today. It's been such a pleasure having you and we so look fun. forward to hopefully having you on again if you'll, yeah. if you'll join us. <laughs> thank you so much. This was very fun and now I have a green smoothie, so I'm like extra happy. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> But that's okay. I know. I, just I wish I could share. Go mine. <laughs> and I've got yes, lots. Yes, I feel I, like I could share. Yep. And another tip too before we go is like so. I've been doing my. Um, I got a CSA. So on Sunday or Saturdays at one, I'm doing an unboxing, and I've been going to the farmers market too. So I got a big bunch of baby turnips with the free leaves. Big punch of beets free leaves and all those are good and I, I drink them all in the smoothies as well you're you're not a fan oh, that's great oh that's such a great idea i love the idea of like unboxing because i am obsessed with farmers markets and i love the idea of just unboxing for your viewers and, and the people that follow your channel that's that's a fun idea i might have to do that sometime because oh, yeah. i just get so excited about a farmers market i mean it's just the most it's just the most lovely thing to be able to go and just have the bounty of all of these people's hard work and these beautiful organic vegetables and fruits. It's just like, oh, it's just heaven. It's heaven. I, and it's so Love much it. fun. And like, I haven't That's done a so CSA fun. in so long and it's just, everything's beautiful. I got this giant bunch of Swiss chard that was like this. Oh, and gorgeous. And I'm still eating on some of it. It's just great. And Mary <laughs> saying, so my new group will be using the Ninja Creamy, and that's no, no new group. Jill, Julie and I are going to, our goal, we have not officially decided nor announced it, is that we're going to try and go live, I think, twice a month over the summer. So we're going to definitely do the Creamy we planned as the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to, one of the things I've been wanting to do is use the smoker box for the grill so I can smoke tofu and potatoes and things like that. Ooh. I have an indoor smoker oh. and my wife gets a little bit persnickety because the whole house smells like a campfire and I'm like, what's the problem? Can't blame the gal, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I went through a little bit on this. I, I get it. You know, it's like your you, hair smells like smoke. I yeah. love smoky, like that kind of smoke is fine. Like, yeah, I'm old. So when I was at the bar, that was when smoking would happen. That kind of smoking. No, that's totally. nasty. No, I remember. But, but I'm like, old too. I remember that very well. Yeah. In New Orleans, I yeah. lived next door to a house that had a big fire pit and they would always invite me over. But instead, I would open up my house and let all the smoke come inside. And so it was like I got to be alone and have the smokiness. It was heaven. <laughs> I'm a true introvert. Um, yes. Okay, awesome. And Diane says, thank you and have a wonderful day. And you guys too. Um, okay. And <laughs> see, this is what happens. This is why it's super cat. Are you and Julie going to go live on this YouTube channel? Yes. And if Julie will get me her headshot or I'm taking what I want, we've talked about this, Julie. And um, so I can put it up. So yeah, it'll come up. If you go to my YouTube channel, and then at the top, it soon, it will say all the June plant-based chats, perhaps in the next day or so. <laughs> it was supposed to happen this weekend. And then hopefully I'll have the two um, chats I'm doing with Julie. And I'm going to be doing, adding all the um, unboxings as well. And CJ from the UK says, I'm sold in the Ninja Creamy. Yeah, you know, I was a little like, eh, I don't know. But I'm really digging it. I'm digging it more and more. So I've probably made, I don't know, 25, 30 pints in it or more so far. So anyhow, wow. Tess, That's enjoy your smoothie. Everybody, if you have just an extra teaspoon of energy today, do something nice for someone else. And if you don't, do something nice for you. And if you can do both, that's even both. better. So let's yes. put a little kindness, a little acceptance out in the world and inside. So I'm just telling you what I need to do. So we're all preaching Absolutely. to the choir, right? 
Okay, have an amazing rest of your week, and hopefully I'll see you guys on Saturday.